a good portion of the episodes of this series were located in the Shibuya crossing section. Uh, like I said, probably just a limited amount of uh, resources <laughs> and, and things like that. So that's all I want to uh, put out there. Welcome to Go Go Kaiju Show, where we sometimes have a healthy obsession with Kaiju. <laughs> I am your co-host, Kent, and with me is your other co-host. Jason, how's it going, peeps? And so today we actually are going to wrap up the Ultraman anime series. Uh, we discussed this off air a couple weeks ago when Jason uh, notified me that season two was six episodes and not 13, which I thought it was. So then we just decided, why not go ahead and finish it? We'll wrap up. Uh, everything here and then we'll give our general uh give our overall thoughts on the entire series and uh thank god we're ending it today that's all i'm saying and, and <laughs> well and and with and i know you mentioned this before we started uh doing the whole main show here and we kind of delved <laughs> into more things. we already started um, discussing yeah. it <laughs> i think maybe we shouldn't just talk about the premise of the whole thing kind of like what we usually do because i know you said that you want to uh get this whole thing off your chest right away well let's before i say that let's just go through our usual rounds here so before we start discussing this whole thing uh jason the the usual yeah, if you see a uh, subscribe button down below or above or wherever you're watching us, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as smash the like button. And uh, you can also uh, follow or subscribe to us at the, any of the uh, audio uh, streaming services that uh, you listen to. So we're going to be on any of those like Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts or any of those. So do that. <laughs> do it now. All right. <laughs> so the Ultraman anime series, three seasons, season six, I mean, two Jesus, <laughs> yeah. uh, episodes. Thank God there aren't six seasons to this piece of crap. Uh, and I just gave it out there. I hate yeah. the show. Um, I was afraid that this was going to happen. <laughs> and I'm not going to do a plot synopsis because guess what? This damn thing makes no sense whatsoever. There are plot lines that are dropped in between seasons that don't connect to future seasons. And in the grand scheme of things, even when everything comes to an ending to this whole thing by season three, still nothing matters. There's a lot of shit that happens that doesn't matter. And so, like I told Jason in a funny little AI thing earlier in the week, if these guys who made the show don't care, neither do I. I still watch the whole thing. I did it because I, I do it for you, the people, the fans. <laughs> I did it so you don't have to go through the agony that I went through. This is garbage. This whole thing is a complete and absolute mess of a series in terms of its character work, its storytelling, how things do not connect, things don't make sense, things are dropped. And as a result, I'm not going to give a synopsis because nothing matters. Yeah, that's, nothing that's, matters. Yeah, that's kind of what I was alluding to earlier. Like with with what you want to talk about, probably don't even bother with the whole pliers. Not it's not so worth so. anyone's time. <laughs> there is an Ultraman wiki out there that uh, does a synopsis of each season, but I have not seen anyone do a synopsis of the entire series as a whole. And there's a reason for that because it's garbage. I mean, it, this, I showed Jason before we came on here. Jason can vouch for me on this. I shared my screen and I showed him a Word document where I had nearly two pages of bullet points of reasons why I hate this Ultraman anime. Jason, did I not show you? It was just a little over a page worth, because I think there yeah. were at least a couple of bullets outside of one full page. Yeah, <laughs> but I had I had quite a few reasons, and I don't think I can show it on here, can I? Can I show it on here? Uh, on yeah, page? yeah, you can. I can, so I just hit share. Yeah, share, and then I'll have to uh, put it on the screen here. So, I mean, you know, this is the start. <laughs> For those of you listening to the audio version, 
uh, I'm sorry, you're not going to be able to see this. I'll, I'll pick out just a few points here. Um, so like, uh, let's see here. I'll just start with the first one. We still have no idea what Edo was during, doing during the first, uh, oh my gosh, here, let me restart that. We still have no idea what Edo was doing in the final episode of season one. It was obvious he was up to something and even Ide was suspicious. This was never followed through. Also, it was very obvious Edo was going to be a baddie later on. This was not fooling anyone. Uh, yeah, this whole first point, like I was telling Jason, you have to be someone who's never watched a single Ultraman series to be yeah. fooled by it. And and I was just telling him earlier before we uh, started this episode that uh, even before uh, the anime was announced and I was reading uh, the chapters of the original manga version of this. And when I saw Edo the first time and kind of going through the chapters, like in the back of my mind, something was telling me that don't be a bit surprised to see Edo become a villain sometime down the road. And that's exactly what uh, the, uh, the final season, final season's uh, baddie was uh, for this entire series was Edo, uh, pretty much uh, betraying the SSSP and uh, becoming uh, the villain. Yeah, so I highlighted another thing here. Kotaro is just a douche. (laughs) Moroboshi is an unforgiving uh, ship uh, muncher. Yeah, and that's sort of the the one thing that I mentioned in our uh, last episode. Uh, uh, Whenever that comes out, it'll, it'll be out before uh, by the time this one comes out, uh, I, so I, 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 I mentioned that uh, Moroboshi, this version of Moroboshi is completely different compared to the more than Moroboshi that we know from the Ultra 7 series. I'm going to read all those points before we're done with this episode. Um, this I mean, I, I don't know where to go from here, Jason, other than the fact maybe I should start going off of points now and we might well, get a discussion off of some let of those. Me, just... Let me get my points in here. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, when it comes to season two, I would say overall, out of all the three seasons that we have here, this one is probably the worst one. And to me, it just felt like Nothing really happened. Nothing matters. That. It's yeah. the most different out of this whole uh, trilogy of seasons. Yeah. And then and then I um, uh, told him earlier, told Ken earlier, that with the princess, this alien princess. Mia, gets, I think uh, was her name. I think so, Mia. When she gets stabbed there and uh, Seiji kind of picks up her body, try to see if she was still alive. Like, I... I mentioned that I don't know if it was part of the uh, the animation or if it was a uh, and no, uh, that it was overlooked that you see her eyes and then like mouth movement and stuff. And I was like, I don't know if if she was still alive or <laughs> uh, a mist happened in the animation, so we never got any answers to that up until the this post credit. After uh, season three finishes, which uh, Kent uh, Dave and realized that that was a thing. I was done once the credits rolled. I was like, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently she was still alive, along with uh, uh, the one other gal kind of in this uh, golden suit, which we thought that she uh, perished by the hands of Mephisto. And we don't get answers to how she was still alive. And then we had. I don't a, think Mephisto killed her. It was. Um, well, it seemed Dark like. Star, it was like Dark Star's. Um, uh, like weird little alien creature that was shooting off like drill bit type things. Well, it just just the way that uh, she went out, you thought that she uh, died uh, by the hands of Mephisto. And then you see one of the twin uh, brother aliens kind of in this bar and then you had a dog come in and then they sort of get drunk and and all that stuff and that was kind of essentially (laughs) the end of that it's like in the end that 
whole little thing didn't was sort of unnecessary, but still you wouldn't even have an answer to uh, Mia if she was still alive and, and all that. But um, nevertheless, however, I would say at least the animation, like I mentioned in season one, that it felt like it wasn't all that uh, gray or sort of meh. I would say with the animations, uh, especially in season three, um, season two, oh, whatever. Uh, season two is sort of on par with season one, but with season three, I thought it was a little bit better. It seemed like over time they sort of, uh, with the the CGI with uh, for animes and all that, they've kind of uh, perfected it more. So I think it got a little bit better, but still sort of on par. Uh, with the kind of the same old uh, animation and all that. Uh, and I would say the last few episodes I sort of liked, particularly uh, the final battle of it. And to me, I was sort of surprised that uh, when say, uh, Shinjiro uh, transforms that he, that his uh, Ultraman suit uh, turns into sort of like the actual Ultraman lookalike, but kind of in the suit form, which that sort of surprised me in a way. But it also, I don't know if you sort of noticed or kind of had a thought in your mind that to me it felt like a little bit of a common writer ish uh, presence. Oh, within dude, that suit. common writer <laughs> is Oscar gold compared to this turd. <laughs> Well, but, oh, but just, dude, but just the helmet of this transformer. I thought Ultraman. it looked more like the Ultraman, original Ultraman, at least close to it, anyways. But it felt like a little bit of a resemblance in a way. But, um, but I would say the battle, the final battle was pretty good, uh, in a way. But, um, yeah, overall. Like I said in the pre uh, previous episodes, that uh, that with the limited amount of time that they have with this animation or this anime, uh, that, to be honest, I would say they should have gone long more with the manga because it delved far off from that uh, iteration, and I and also sort of continue on, but. I would say part of the reason why with the limited amount of uh, time and limited amount of episodes, it could be partly on Netflix sort of way with, kind of, with sort of their reputation in a way. But then um, at the uh, same time, it should have the whole anime should have gone al along with the manga in the first place. So between the anime and the manga, in the end, I still prefer the manga version over this anime. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> I Okay, I, I will give the series this compliment. And I said it two weeks ago when we covered season one that I think, at least for the moment, because I wasn't going to put like a final rating on everything. I had sort of a pseudo temporary rating on the whole series at that point. But I said, one of the best things about this series was the animation. And I still stand by that. Despite everything else around the thing being total garbage. The best thing in my opinion about this whole anime series is the animation itself. I think it looks terrific. I think there's a lot of movements where, like I said before, I think we're maybe mocap. I'm not sure, but it kind of moved like there was mocap involved. And so from here, I'm going to stop just because, Jason, I'm not sure if there's other things you want to cover, because otherwise I'm ready to go through points and talk about various things yeah. throughout the rest of the series. Yeah, the one thing is that uh, I don't know if anybody noticed as far when it comes to the anime, it felt like almost the majority of the episodes or um, the scenery where it takes place. It seems like 
a lot of it takes place around the the Shibuya uh, crossing <laughs> section. There's like that's sort of the one downside is that it felt like they were you can definitely tell that they were really limited um, as far as some uh, some of the resources that they had to reuse this Shibuya crossing type of scene in a good portion of their um, episodes. Of course, there is going to be uh, things that will be different, especially towards the very end and all that. Uh, but it felt like a good portion of the episodes of this series were located in the Shibuya crossing section. Uh, like I said, probably just a limited amount of uh, resources <laughs> and, and things like that. So that's all I want to uh, put out there. You sure you don't want to be discussing anything else before I start going on my tirade? I I think I sh- uh, shared my uh, piece of my mind on it. <laughs> Surprisingly, I thought there was going to be more. So your stuff was pretty short. Right, what, else? <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> All right. So let me put up my list. I already shared the first point. Uh, okay. So the next point I have is speaking of plots not being followed through, we still have no idea what the ship was in the final episode of st- season one. Dark Star's plan was never followed through. Hell, all three seasons feel like one separate, incomplete storyline. It's a fucking mess. Not to mention the story is intentionally convoluted in order to come off as this epic masterpiece of sorts. What it ends up doing is making a real mess. I still have no idea what Dark Star's ultimate plan was because at the end of that, he wanted to be killed for his master plan. What is his master plan? Exactly. <laughs> it's it, it's a pile of shit. I, I mean, this is a mess. Yeah, it's like I, and that's just the tip of the iceberg yeah. of some of the numerous pl- plot points that were never followed through. Yeah, you had you had. You had that uh, ship that was camouflaged, but they did never really see or hear about it again. And then you had the one built for season two, and you had some sort of master plan. We don't even know if that if the final season here was part of his plan with Mephisto or something of the sort. It seemed like I forget the one villain's name in season two. Is that's that's Dark Star? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if he was part of uh, Mephisto's. Uh, it doesn't thing. matter. Well, but at least you know that Mephisto was uh, was getting his strings pulled by uh, Edo, kind of what we hear about towards the end uh, and everything with him being a baddie. So we don't know if uh, Edo was the, the main one that was pulling all the strings. We don't even know about that. I, I really think Edo was because of how everything po- turned out. Like he was the big baddie, but then I thought maybe Dark Star was considering not just how he looked, but how he came in and how everything was unfolding. And I thought, oh, season three is going to be about this master plan. And I thought in some way he was maybe going to get resurrected in some fashion and become like a pseudo god or something like that. No. It's a totally separate thing where they introduce out of the blue Shinjiro losing control of his powers. And it's like the producers, writers, everyone involved with the series said, remember what we did with season two? Forget it. (laughs) This is what we're going to do now. Okay, boss. Yeah. (laughs) I, I'm so angry, but I'm not going to go off just because I'm afraid I'm going to pop a vein or something. Because this, <laughs> I, I, I can't stress enough how much of a fucking mess this whole thing is. Let me put it to you this way. I'm going to get it out there right now just in case I forget later. You guys know how much I hate on Shin Godzilla. <laughs> And, and maybe a little bit of uh, Spectre Man and... Uh, hey, no, 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 <laughs> Ultraman anime takes the Shin Godzilla spot. <laughs> Holy shit. And that's saying something. <laughs> I, 
I fucking hate this thing. Because it, none of you, you're wasting your time trying to watch this series. You really are. If you are so inclined to watch it, you should only watch the first season. Or, or, because, should, I, or should I say, I would recommend you uh, reading the, the manga itself. You probably are better off doing that. Yeah. But if you really are desperate to watch this for whatever reason, because you're a completionist, I would say... You watch the first 13 episodes of season one and you call it quits there because in some ways, even though it's technically not a complete story, it comes off as more complete than this whole mess does. Because everything from season two through season three is going to make you angry because it's a mess. Things don't get tied up. Plots are introduced and then never followed through. Character work is dumb. Let's just continue with the list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right here. Um, my next point. Arashi and Ide should have switched positions. Neither one fits well in their roles. You and I talked about this a little bit two weeks ago where we were saying Ide being the head of the SSSP seemed a little off and then they bring back Arashi who's kind of this rebel and it sort of fits him but I honestly think if those well, two had switched roles that actually seems like that would be a better fit for those two characters well and and with his character uh the way that they have uh Arashi's character is that uh he he didn't with the way things had been going and all that that he didn't want any part of it so he decided to kind of be in the background kind of as um, uh, kind of a lookout and be so, some sort of um, um, kind of a section, uh, second option or kind of a, um, uh, a safeguard, uh, to say the least, uh, the way that they sort of betrayed him in this one. But yeah, like, as I've said before, that, uh, with this being a an official sequel to the original Ultraman, they they think they seem to um uh, sort of um make their roles a little bit different or make their characters a little bit different compared to the characters from the original Ultraman, where you had E Day's kind of your typical goofball and all that stuff, but then all of a sudden he in the sequel. Uh, version he's more serious and kind of heading everything to where you didn't even think he would <laughs> accomplish such a thing so my next point is petty but i hate the series so much i wrote it down anyway the songs for the series are just terrible and do not fit the series i think the the songs are awful I did. Um, if you saw the credits at the end of season two. They do this Ultraman break dancing thing, which is dumb. The songs at the beginning of season two and three are terrible. Just all the actual songs where there are lyrics, they they don't fit and they're the worst. I did actually listen to uh, the official soundtrack. <laughs> that was mainly all the instrumental stuff. Well, I think they did sort of include kind of the lyric versions and all that. But as far as uh, the the instrumental non-lyric versions, I think those were pretty good, particularly when it comes to this. I would, uh, as I would describe it, kind of that interstellar uh, theme music where they uh, incorporate that uh, music in certain areas of uh, the episodes throughout the series. I thought that was probably the best one out of all the songs that they had. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the actual score, the non-lyrical stuff is good or serviceable. Mm -hmm. But the actual songs where you get someone singing, it's good. Well, well, and that's that's sort of typical when it comes to animes and all that stuff. They'll do I have not heard of him using this trashy <laughs> in a long time. But but uh, uh, on average, they do something that's a bit sort of kind of uh, uh, creative, to say the least, <laughs> for each of the animes. 
My next point is this is a terrible sequel to the original Ultraman show. Again, nothing is explained as to why there are no large kaiju other than Zetan, and the violence is just appalling, especially in the first season. So Zetan is the only large kaiju we get in this three-season series, and the violence in season one is just grotesque. I, I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago when we covered that. They clean it up for season two and three. It's not as terrible in those two seasons but well, then by season three they pick it up a little bit more yeah it's so it's season three is kind of more or less in the middle season two yeah. is kind of like your safe child like child safe version. yeah oh and i forgot you know what i should have opened the show up with i should have said we are discussing Disney's Marvel's Ultraman, or excuse me, <laughs> Final Fantasy Presents Ultra. Ah, no, <laughs> because well, this like is this is a complete and total ripoff of like either a Final Fantasy or a Marvel superhero type of thing. But yeah, getting back to my one point, I just I, I said it before, like I just I found the violence in this whole thing appalling. I, I like for the first time I think ever I was actually offended by violence in something because I'm like this is a sequel to a kid show from 65 and yeah I mean look the Ultraman shows I'm not saying were were 100% clean but they weren't like an R-rated gore fest you know, it, like I know some of them in the later versions got a little bit rougher, but even in the original Ultraman, it was not it was nowhere near what we get here. Well, I can s sort of um, I can at least see maybe the reason why, because I mean, back when the original Ultraman was made, it was it was around the late 60s and all that stuff. They didn't have a whole lot of resources compared to uh, when this uh, anime sequel uh, was made, where now it's sort of, I'm not going to, well, sort of realistic in a way. Not really, but uh, yeah. sort of. Uh, and then a lot more things going on with the compared back in the day in the like sit late sixties and all that. So I can, um, I can maybe s say that's kind of the differentiation between the two is that one was made during the time when there was limited amount of resources or sort of imagination during that time compared to today. Well, yeah, but it wasn't like shooting blood all over the place either. Either, like that was the thing. Like this, at times, was like a, an eighty slasher movie with what some of the things that they did, um, or maybe nineties. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, um, for the show not to follow through on killing Hayata and Bemular is ridiculous. For a show that is so violent, it pulls its punches on killing the heroes in order to bring them back for a big finale and a feel-good ending. It's super contrived to not kill Shinjiro when he was obviously dead. So yeah, I mean, and and I can and I'll add the uh, the Mia uh, female princess and now the other female uh, alien to to that. No, no heroes of significant importance get killed in this series. None at all. In fact, uh, Reina Sayama's dad is nearly killed, and yeah, I mean that's it. He's nearly killed, yeah. and I thought maybe they killed him, but I thought okay, well, well they kill like a C character in the series, so what? But they don't even kill him. There are no stakes. Like that's another problem that I didn't even put on here is there's no stakes to this stupid thing. None of your heroes get killed. I think what. By the way, what even happened to Bemilar? Did Bemilar like sacrifice himself uh, to free Hayat? We have no idea. Bemilar powers right. up after he breaks free from his prison. Yeah, that's that's and sort that's of, it. Yeah, that's the only last time that you see him. He, he, he turns in kind of that the red ball that you uh, see in the very first episode of the original Ultraman, and you kind of hear that famous sound effect and all that. 
But yeah, that was essentially it. You and, never see or hear from Bemular again. And Hayata, as Bemular is powering up, is going, well, why are you doing this? And Bemular spouts the stupidest line. And I say it's a stupid line because there is no evidence to suggest that this happened to Bemular. And Bemular says, I have grown fond of you humans. Maybe, maybe. How? Maybe the, I can maybe think of one thing that sort of makes sense because we see both uh, Hayata and Benny Lark having that uh, prison uh, sort of thing is that he probably gave up his life or you gave up uh, most of his life force energy and put it into Hayata and that's how he sort of escaped and then helped out the other Ultraman. That's what I'm thinking. Battle. That's That could be possibly the only thing I can think of. Right, and I think you're right because that's the only thing that makes sense. But even then, it's like, you didn't, you didn't nothing, even hear any mention about, about nothing it. Nothing is said, nothing is shown. And how has Bemular become fond of humans? We Bemular has always been this character in the shadows type of guy that seems to occasionally come about and bring about like maybe important secrets or moments. Bemular was the villain, more or less, in like the first episode of this series. And or him. Like it sounded like I, I I just again now my anger is like starting to slowly creep <laughs> up to the surface here. This doesn't unleash your right. anger. We see nothing, nothing is said. I mean, I would rather take exposition than having nothing at all because exposition in some cases is worse than actually showing the audience something like developing characters through interactions and other experiences exposition sometimes is the only way to go but sometimes exposition is a cheap way to bring about facts and 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 motivations and things like that within a story but that to me is better than spouting some line that makes no sense because again we never seen anything nor are told anything about Bemular and building relationships with humans. Because Bemular, yeah, Bemular was friends with Yapul, but Yapul was an alien. Bemular saved Seiji when he was a little boy on that plane. But again, Bemular was never really around to raise Seiji. That was all Yapul. Again, it's still, like if Bemular raised Seiji, maybe I could follow through on that. But no, Bemular is a dick and just says, here, take care of this child. And I'm going to go off and whack-a-mole or something. Like, I, I mean, Bemular, we get nothing. Anyways, let's move on from this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Oh, well, actually, this next point sort of goes along with Bemular. Uh, we never find out who Yuko really was and why she meant so much to Seiji. I remember saying that I really was confident in saying that I thought Bemular was going to be Yuko. Nope. Bemular was his own thing, apparently is male. And this Yuko that was brought up like in the final handful of episodes of season one, we get a couple more flashbacks. But again, we never know who she is and why she meant so much to Seiji. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing I uh, sort of forgot. See, I even sort of forgot about it because it's never even talked about again. Because, because <laughs> yeah, I yeah towards towards the end of uh, season one, that was you only hear maybe a a few mentions, and then that was essentially it. Because it's like, uh, like I watched season two, but then never hear anything about that. Oh, and uh, the other thing is that I did watch season two in its uh, original audio, Japanese audio and all that stuff, and then sort of went back to the English version or dub version for season three. And by comparing the two, um, I think both uh, the, uh, the original Japanese audio and the English dub, I think, are all right. So if you're into either of the two, um, you can certainly at least watch him either way but i don't even know like i said and kent said um it's just better just to read the manga version (laughs) 
Obviously. Well, and I was going to say something about the dubbing, but I didn't think it was that important. But since you brought it up, like there are different voice actors for some of the characters in season three than in season one and two for some of the characters. So some I of the characters are going to notice. Different. Well, I know because you did the Japanese. But like I said, I thought about bringing it up. I'm like, ah, it's not going to matter. But since you brought it up, I thought I'd just say something about it. Okay. Mephisto comes out of nowhere like Dark Star. Again, another weird, incomplete story that makes no sense and doesn't have a proper introduction earlier in the series. Uh, and that's and that's also the other thing that I keep bringing up. It's just due to, to the constraint of the entire series itself with limited amount of episodes and time. And like I had told you like before we started, because you and I talked about this point a little bit, um, even though the manga is still ongoing, like I said before, if for the series, you should find some good ending point within the manga and say, this is where we're going to end our series here. Um, even if there's limited money and resources to maybe follow through on the entire manga, that's still not a good excuse for bad writing, incoherent mm -hmm. writing. Right. That's all I'm going to say. Um, Shinjiro is an awful Ultraman. He never really grows up per se and is a whiny character. <laughs> and then the next point was about people being ship munchers. <laughs> uh, we already think, did that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't even need to repeat myself again on that. Did you want to have say anything about Shinjiro? Uh yeah, Shinjiro, yeah, it just seemed like uh, pretty much throughout, it's like he always doubts himself and all that. Just it, it felt like that he sort of got his shit together at the end of season one, but then it just sort of reverted back yeah. right until the very end of season three when he becomes the actual Ultraman or transforms into the actual Ultraman. Uh, there it, it yeah it's just inconsistent uh in a way and just felt like things are just kind of in their own little uh universes there yeah well it's kind of like what i was saying earlier how it seems like all three seasons other than like the main group of good guys like they're totally separate tv series Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of how it looks and comes off as. Yeah. Thank God we're not doing this live anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, time in. Shinjiro's mother shows up out of the blue in season three when she should have been introduced in season one. I think she might. I think she was sort of in there, but maybe kind of not in the speaking role compared to uh, season three. But you know, I, I think you may have seen her in some sort of angle for a few seconds towards the beginning. But yeah, that was, that was sort of it until she had her little speaking role. And then the one thing I want to point out was that actually his mother there, cause then, you know, he got the address and stuff to that uh, Shinto shrine. And then all of a sudden you get that one female uh, alien come in. So that also can, uh, kind of makes you think too <laughs> well and like it's interesting because she doesn't say much about hayata but here's a theory i got and i have nothing to back this up it's just a theory and i i think i might even have it on my list here but i'm gonna bring it up now i forget the gal's name the female character of the original sssp in the original ultraman show what's what was her character's oh, name um here let me Give me, give me a moment here. 
so they bring back three of them, but they don't bring back the female, who is also a very integral part of that team. Uh, part of me thinks she could be Hayata's wife, but we don't get any true inkling that that's true. Uh, Akiko Fuji. Akiko Fuji. Yeah, Fuji sounds more familiar because they usually call each other by their, their surnames there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if his mother is Akiko, like Hayata and Akiko. But again, like I said, but, we have to well, never know. Yeah. That. And then on top of that, even if she's not Akiko, what happened to her? We see her in a photo that they show a handful of times in season three. But it seems like his mother, though, is much younger the way it looks compared to Hayata, where he, like, all three of the crew members, we at least see them having their hair turn gray and stuff over time and all that. So, but hers, at least. Well, I, with females and stuff, you know, They'll probably do some cosmetics and all that stuff, too. So we may never know. But There is one thing that was said, though, I remember very distinctly in season one, where it's when Shinjiro is a little boy and Hayata, you know, still has like some, you know, brown in his hair still. He mentions, I think, to Ide at one point saying like, well, when you have kids at my age, because he was like in his late 40s, early 50s when at that time when Shinjiro was a little boy, because he admits within the first couple episodes of season one that he was old when Shinjiro was born. So, yeah, I mean, I think you bring up a good point. Maybe that proves that she is not Akiko because Akiko would have been around the same age as everyone else mm-hmm. there. She, she she still could have been the youngest one, but maybe by no more than a couple of years. Yeah. You know, and so, I, yeah, I if you're a 40 or 50 year old guy, sure, you could have kids. But if you're a woman, by the time you start getting into your 40s, having kids begins to get dangerous for you because there could be complications, higher complication risks of having children. So, yeah, like, yeah, maybe that right there is proof that she's not a Kiko. Uh, And then, too, with her parents, she looks much younger compared to Hayata and the other three. Well, yeah, she should be because... You know, if if she had, I mean, she would have been very lucky to have gone through a pregnancy at like late 40s, early 50s when having Shinjiro, if that were the case. But yeah, like, where's Akiko? They brought back these other guys, but they didn't bring back Akiko. Did, did the actress who's still alive, like, did they go to her and maybe she had some qualms with that? I wouldn't think she would. She seems real cool and laid back. I, I don't know, but that to me was really strange and just really ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Um, excuse me. And this is going to be another petty point, but because I'm <clears throat> hating on the show already, I'm just going to bring it up anyway. Raina's ultra suit has a stupid grin on the mask. <laughs> uh, I I don't think I ever remember that, and I didn't see anything like that in the manga to be honest so i don't know if you're just looking at uh uh, the shape or outline of the suit it's part of the mask but it's not um like i don't think it's intentionally meant to be grinny so here let me here i got here's a picture i'll try to bring it up for you here okay oh wait a minute what oh it's here um, let me, let me, can I save this? Okay, good. I can. Okay. And then I'll put it in the chat here for you. Um, can I? Oh, wait a minute. No, I can't. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I can here. Bing. Okay, okay. No, 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 no. I get, wait a minute. I can't, like I can't upload. I can't upload clips or anything. No, there's probably a limited amount. Okay, here, I'm going to go back to Facebook and send it to you through Messenger, just so we aren't wasting more time here. Um, but you'll see it here. (laughs) 
Okay, just sent it to you. Let's see here. Because I, I hate the show so much, I'm going to hate anything that pisses me off. Yeah, I can sort Do you see it yeah. there? Uh, I don't think it's meant to be a grin, but and, no, and, be and also and also kind of has maybe a, what looks like eyelashes too. Oh gosh, I hate the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I can sort of see. <laughs> okay, no, my next point: Raina care caring so much about what some news pundits say about Ultraman is stupid and makes her look petulant. It's like me calling the kettle black. <laughs> like, <is it? laughs> Pot <me Yeah>. kettle. <laughs> also, the other thing is that one professor, he was fucking annoying, too. <laughs> you know, that's one guy I wish the aliens would have been. I, That's the one person I would have been more than okay to see uber violence against. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's no way Hayata or Shinjiro should have ultra powers as Ultraman left Hayata's body at the end of the final episode of the original series. But since they have some abilities, how come they couldn't grow large? See? Yeah, it's just, I mean, it was a rhetorical question. I didn't actually expect you to have an answer, but I just well, thought. And the one thing, too, is that when Shinjiro transcend, uh, transcends to be like the actual Ultraman, you would think that he would become a giant, too, and yeah. all that, and kind of the same appearance as the original Ultraman. But like I said, I was sort of surprised to see. Uh, kind of the suit version of that uh, Ultraman look and everything to it. But then at the same time, I was like, I kind of thought he was probably going to be giant and all that, but he didn't. <laughs> well, in, you know, I thought it was interesting that the human size ultra family was able to dispose of Zeton with relative ease, because when you remember that battle between giant original Ultraman mm -hmm. and that final episode of the series versus Zeton, giant Ultraman had a heck of a time. These little guys, yeah, they're getting their butt kicked for like a moment, but then they kind of dispose of Zeton with relative ease. Mm -hmm. The series, man. I just. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Reyna ends up being neutered as a character when Mephisto takes her hostage. What's the point of making her an Ultraman when she becomes a damsel in distress? I hated that part. It's 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 kind of that usual cliche that's always used in yep. shows. And, and that's why I hate it. Movies <laughs> and all that, just for Shinjiro to save her and all that. That's kind of the whole reason behind it. So <laughs> I think yeah. everyone sort of would... Uh, have, understand whoever watched this yeah i mean i just i hated it uh the show acts like a dragon ball z show at times i was a thinking like, bit, yeah. think the dragon ball z stuff to dragon ball z but at <laughs> least here but at least they don't do like that key power up or anything of the sort. are you sure well, except, you except in jiro <laughs> not not shinjiro up uh, the one thing I can at least understand and see is uh, Kintaro. I can at least Kintaro. see that. Yeah. I can at least see that. Okay, so I haven't watched Ultraman Taro. Does that character in the original show, like, have that? I, I don't know. I'm in the same I'm in the same ballpark as you. I have no idea what goes on in that show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I hated it. I'm like, dude, this is not all uh, this. This is not Ultraman. It's true. This isn't Ultraman. This is garbage. This isn't Ultraman. This is Disney Marvel presents Ultraman. Like, this is not Ultraman either. And it's certainly not Dragon Ball Z. Let Dragon Ball Z be Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we already talked about Akiko. So past that point. Um Okay, this is something that came like within the final, I don't know, like 45 seconds or so of the ending of season three. And I'm just like, oh, for the love of Pete, you're making me hate this thing so much more. So Moroboshi ordered Jack and Taro to kill every alien. Are they going to create oh. carnage in that neighborhood in Tokyo where the aliens have found refuge? If so, that's so stupid because so many of those aliens were living peacefully amongst people. 
Well, and, and we don't even know. More about she says he says kill every alien. Well, and we don't exactly know where at specifically. Um, right, he's referring to. So it makes you sort of think about that, but who knows? <laughs> I'm picturing them being like these domestic terrorists. They're helicoptering into that neighborhood and then they're coming down, <laughs> you know, all over a lot of these aliens that are just innocents. They're trying to find refuge on this plane. And it's just like even more to more reason to hate Moroboshi because I am assuming because this show is so stupid and so ridiculously violent and so stupid. Stupid. <laughs> they would have an idea like that. They'd be like, "Yeah, we'll just have our, you know, most unlikable character tell these other guys to go kill these peaceful aliens over here that we've seen periodically throughout the whole series." And they'll be like, "Yes, sir, dude," because you know we don't have a spy. We're like jellyfish over here. Like it just, oh my gosh! Because I really do believe that's what he means. Because Moroboshi is that bloodthirsty. <laughs> All right. So here's my last point that I wrote down here. Yapul and Adad simply disappear in the end. According to you, they didn't totally disappear. But regardless, they disappear because, yeah, we still don't know what Adad's mission ap uh, is after season one. Because he was saying he was going to go out. He was tracking some major alien. And we don't see him tracking any alien. We see him come back a couple times, but he never mentions a like that he's tracking someone. Again, another oh. dropped storyline. And, and when you see him again in that uh, post credit after the series or that the scrolling credit part, uh, he never mentions really anything about that or never get really any closure on what he found or, or all that. He sort of maybe alludes to something else, but then now uh, before he says something, that was it of the entire post credit and that's the end of the series. So you never get any closure whatsoever. Exactly. You don't get closure <laughs> on anything in the stupid series. And we all know that really from the word go, it is about Shinjiro becoming Ultraman. That that's kind of the, you know, sort of the final point of the story they're trying to tell, but that's not the whole thing. And you get this, I can't say it enough, this incoherent <clears throat> cesspool of a story. Do we want to talk about anything more? Do we want to go to final points here? Uh, why don't we just go to the final points here? <laughs> I hate this show and you shouldn't watch it. Okay. If you have not watched it, I did the work for you. You're welcome. Please send me a Christmas card this year. <laughs> Gosh, I am Santa Claus to a lot of you right now. This show is awful. I, yep, I, whoops, wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked about, I've talked about how much I've disliked this movie for nearly eight years. This thing is a masterpiece compared to this garbage that we are talking. We have covered some awful crap here on this podcast for like, what, 12 years now? Oh, and 14, 14, 14 years and, oh, and up to 200 more. and up to 200 episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not counting commentaries where we've covered movies, but not discussed them in a format like we're doing right now. This is the worst. I, there have been things on here that have made me mad, uh, like with Common Rider or whatever. But you know what? A lot of that stuff is fun, stupid. Like I can laugh at it and have fun. This stuff is garbage, stupid. What about comparing this with Zarkor. I'd rather watch Zarkor. I really would. <laughs> because, look, it's not a terrific film by any stretch of the imagination, but when you watch those people act in that movie, you know that they know they're in a crappy film and they're playing along. That is more entertaining. I could sit down with a group of friends, watch that thing, and we'd be laughing at and with that film. This stuff, I would be like, and they're like just and everyone would be like no pass that over <laughs> like this is not worth it okay anything that i've ever said before like about shin godzilla or any tv show or episodes or movies and anything i will say in the future that we have covered here and i don't know 
to be honest, if in the future, if we'll cover anything as bad as this. But up to this point, in our nearly decade and a half time of being a podcast, the longest running kaiju podcast, by the way, <laughs> this is by far the worst thing ever. The animation's great. That's the only compliment I can give it. But everything else about it is garbage. Because this thing thinks it's creative. It's not. This thing thinks it's sneaky and tricky by being like, hey, we're going to have this Zetonian Edo alien, you know, kind of part of it. We're going to, you know, make our original character seem suspicious of him. But he's going to come off as a good guy. If you are going to be like, oh, yeah, sure, he's a good guy. You have no idea what you're getting yourself into. It tells me that you have never seen an Ultraman thing in the first place. If you have seen an Ultraman series in the first place and you go along with these guys believing that Edo is a good guy, you're stupid. I mean, you just are. In blocks of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> this is garbage. Storylines are hardly ever followed through and completed. What was that alien ship? Who is Yuko? Who and what is Bemular? Uh, Dark Star. What the hell? Um, Mephisto. <laughs> what, the what the hell? <laughs> um, defeating of Zetan. What the hell? Um, I mean, just <laughs> e eating a Rashi. I don't give a shit. Like, I just, <laughs> I just hate this show so much. It proves to me again, like I told Jason earlier in the week, these people who created this anime series don't care. They really don't. Usually when I think of anime, I think of some of the best storytelling you can find in terms of a show. Because in the limited time I have spent with anime, those stories are usually very well told, comprehensive, and some of the best character work and some of the best plot developing uh, stories you're ever going to find. This is the complete opposite of that. This thing, say it with me, folks is garbage it is garbage <laughs> it is garbage <laughs> don't watch it i so badly just want to dive deeper but i can't because i'm already about to blow my mind right now because i hate this thing it is stupid do not waste your time if you want to do something like jason said go read the manga the manga i'm sure is probably so much better but don't watch this do not watch it I bought the stupid DVD several years ago. You know what? What a waste of money. Like, it just, I can't believe it. And I thought, hey, because the Netflix anime Godzilla trilogy was pretty good, and I think Singular Point's a pretty darn good thing, too. I'm like, hey, maybe this is kind of along the same lines. It should be good. Along with nope. Gamma Rebirth. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Gamma Rebirth. I mean, come on. Like, you're batting a thousand at this point. No. It's like, well, that's one out. It's like, you know what? That's one out too many because this, it's like a batter going up. And before the pitcher even throws the ball, he takes a swing and the ump goes strike. And you're the baseball manager going, why'd you swing, you idiot? Why'd you swing? He didn't even throw the ball yet. Why? This is stupid. Okay. Or you just take Don't a shit right time. off the bat. Don't waste your money. <laughs> this is garbage. Don't watch it. F minus, 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 minus. Like, I just... I, I cannot believe how garbage this is. Garbage. If, if I if I can remember what that uh, one acronym rating that I had for Zarkor, you should probably give it at that. <laughs> Zarkor is like Citizen Kane. But um, I don't even know where to go up after that whole uh, spiel there. I sort of said my piece uh, a while back. Um, like I said, if I would to choose between uh, the anime here or the manga, I would suggest you to read the manga version because you don't even know how long the manga one is going to uh, take. And it's still ongoing uh, as of this recording. And that... Uh, has way more time compared to this uh, three season uh, series here with limited amount of time and uh, resources. And then it's on Netflix. <laughs> Netflix <laughs> um, has some good stuff, but this thing is not good. But in the end, I would prefer you to 
uh, read the manga. If you, it, for whatever reason, God forbid, still be one motherfucking insist on watching um, the anime version, give yourself a little bit, just going to give yourself a little bit of a warning that um, as far as uh, if you're into storytelling and all that, it may not be a thing be for fun. you. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a little bit of things that kind of go for this uh, anime, but now a whole lot uh, kind of helps it <laughs> out in the end. So, like I said, suggest you to read the manga version of this series. So, um, I'm going to be a bit more lenient on this one compared to Cat, but I'll give it a D. <laughs> a D? <laughs> this is like the biggest flaming hot garbage in a long time. <laughs> Hey, we're two completely different people. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to have to have a separate episode where I complain about your rating on this. <laughs> How can Jason do that? Did he see the same thing I did? Um, well, we're two different people. Okay. <laughs> this is a hot mess. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. All right. So. Um, are we back to covering common writer a couple of weeks from now yes i think i think this is it of all thank the, god i'm looking forward the, to that of the netflix thing unless if you want to do the the con skyland or animated series which is on netflix but maybe we, we could do that, do that at time. some point Here's maybe the sometime thing. next year yeah Here's the thing, like, I wa we'll discuss it at a later point, not right now, but I want to, like, approach how we do TV shows a little bit differently than the way we have been doing it for a while. But anyways, so we're going to do, like, what we did before is we're going to do, like, what, three episodes, three episode commentary and stuff at a time. I don't even remember what episodes we left off on. I'll I'll have to dig. Um, I'll have to yeah. dig in uh, one of the uh, podcast episodes because I always number how many what episodes that we discuss in those so. and one important thing and i think i maybe said it two weeks ago when we covered season one and i forgot to say it here i know i forgot to say it here is this anime series so badly made me miss the original ultraman series i adore that series and i find it to be blasphemous that this thing tries to be a sequel to that incredible series. It's not a perfect series, but it is a wonderfully crafted with love series that makes me feel young again. And it was one of the things in late 2012, early 2013, that made me sort of escape the world for about a month and a half as I worked through that show and remember part of the reasons why I am a kaiju fan, why I love this stuff. And this to me is a kick in the nutsack to that original series because that original series, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the best tokusatsu series of all time if not the best. And and again, this will be the last time I'm going to say it. Just read the damn manga version of this. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do three episodes of Common Writer. Um, Get back into it. Like, <laughs> and finish yeah, up. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not sure how long that's going Because like I said, I don't even remember what episode we were. I think probably just a little bit over. Here, let, let me uh, take a look-see uh, here. Um, hold on. Uh, I should have done that. I got it. You can cut uh, this part out. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's going to at least be a few places where I'm going to need to cut out here. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. This is the last one. <laughs> Episode 192 is the last time that we did it. Um, 
So we did episodes 64 through 67. So we'll be starting on from 68 to 70 for the next episode. And there's what we keep forgetting. There's think, 93. We keep it's either 91 or 93. <laughs> uh, hold on. Time for another round of research. Uh, common writer. Uh, Showa era. Um, original work. Um, episodes. Uh, ninety eight. <laughs> so, so we got um, we got like thirty three. Ep- so, pretty much starting with sixty eight. We we've got thirty more episodes left. Okay. That and so if we do, th- we're not even going to get done by the end of this year. Unless if you want to, unless if you want to add one more, <laughs> it was already it taking four. us. I think it was already taking us. I think like what two hours? Close to, to two hours. Close to two hours. <laughs> do you want to do that? Uh, I'm leaving can, that up to you. We can talk about it up until then, because you're the one like putting all these things together. It's like, do you want to do that? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're okay with it, I guess I am too. But. Well, Definitely see, no like I that. said, we can talk about it up until. Then. But even then, I don't think we're going to get done with it in time because we are, we're doing a year end episode. We haven't totally um, settled on that as far as exactly what we're going to do. And then, um, and then uh, we also have the 70th anniversary, uh, Godzilla anniversary. That's the one thing I want to talk to you about. Well, that was uh, something I that I had brought up as a potential year end where we like sort of go through like the characters oeuvre again and just i don't exactly how we would discuss about that i'm not sure other than like hey it's godzilla he's cool he's in pop culture and he's got these movies a lot of them are fun here they are like (laughs) like i said i wouldn't know how to talk about it but (laughs) um maybe something more specific but anyways, uh, just want to say before we uh, end this episode, if you see a subscribe button down below or above uh, above this uh, video, wherever you're watching us from, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Smash the like button. And if there's any uh, audio streaming service that you listen to, uh, make sure to find us and subscribe to us through there as well. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully, hopefully you got some enjoyment out of my suffering. Yeah, and as watch, always, <laughs> don't watch this series. It's a waste of your time. <laughs> and like I said, I know I said we're gonna not gonna say it again, but this will be the last time. I swear, swear to God. Read the manga version of this show. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a couple of weeks when we return to Common Writer. All right, see you guys next time. Mm-hmm.